Hey, school. Good morning, class. <laughs> I don't even know how to act for Sunday school. I should get a, a hat or something, you know. I don't know that I need a hat, but I don't know. You never know. Let me uh, get this class started on the right foot. you got to understand how I feel about Sunday school. What can I say? Anyways, we decided that uh, we probably needed to start a Sunday school class because there's so many people out there that think they know or act like they know or might know or maybe have some confusion. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever it is, but the Lord said start one. So we're doing uh, Navigators, Assurances of Salvation and Christian Living um, that is Growing in Christ. It's a 13 week course for new and growing Christians. So, if you're new, welcome. Guess what? You're saved. <laughs> you might not know that, and I might not know that, but God knows that. So, guess what? You can know that eventually. So, we're going to go through this just the way it is and read it and do it. And it's just like Sunday school, you know? It's kind of like I have no idea what your Sunday school is like, but I never went to one, so I get to make one up. So, guess what? Video Church, we're doing Sunday school video style. Praise the Lord. Okay, so this is by Navigators Press, like I said, you know, and we're just going to use it as a, you know, platform to go from whatever the Holy Spirit might teach us through to, to inspire us that we might learn from Him what He wants us to know. Because without having ears to hear, I could talk for the next 20 minutes and you wouldn't hear a word I say, unless we're listening. So you see, you could put on some iPad, I, iPads? some iPods or I, whatever goes in your ear. You can stick it in your ear and not hear anything I'm going to say. <laughs> Unless you're listening. Then if you're listening, you might not be hearing, so you still got to figure that one out. There's a difference between listening and hearing. So, let's get into this right away and just forget about the rest. Jesus Christ said, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 Coupled with this wonderful truth is the statement in the Gospel of John that to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 If you have, to the best of your knowledge, received Jesus Christ, God's Son, as your own Savior, according to the scriptures quoted above, you will become a child of God. Too many people make the mistake of measuring the certainty of their salvation by their feelings. Don't make that tragic mistake. It's not about feelings. It's about what God has done. Believe God. Take Him at His word. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. From 1 John 5.13 It is impossible in the short space of this book to go into all the results of the transaction that took place when you asked Jesus into your life. A child may be born into a wealthy home and become the possessor of good parents, brothers and sisters, and houses and lands, but at the same time of his birth, it is not necessary that he be informed of all of these things. He, in fact, probably knows none of those. There are more important matters to take care of first. First things come first. He must be protected, for he has been born into a world of many enemies. In the hospital room, he is handled with sterilized gloves and kept from outsiders that he might not fall victim to the countless germs just waiting to attack, or infections just waiting to behold. He must be given nourishment regularly and protected from exposure to extreme heat or cold. That's what a baby is like. You have become a child of God. You have been born into his family as a spiritual babe. You have the potential to live the rest of your life in victorious obedience to Jesus. It is our desire to share with you a few simple truths that will strengthen you and keep you safe 
from the onslaught of Satan, your enemy. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, you will read, Like newborn babes, crave your spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. And in Acts 20.32, you will read, Now I commit you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up. His word will now serve as your spiritual food and will build you up in the faith. You probably have a Bible. If not, get one. Begin to read it faithfully every day. It is important that you begin to act or to set aside time, preferably in the morning, to read and study the Word of God and to pray. A good place to start reading would be the Gospel of John or the Gospel of Mark. I would say Matthew, but you know that's what they're saying, so you figure out for yourself what you want to do. I read Matthew. I like Matthew. I think John was confusing to me, but okay. You know, if you want to read John, go to John. You want to do Mark? I have no idea why they say Mark. But okay, maybe because it's short. A very effective way to get the Bible into your life is to begin memorizing key portions of it. Why should we do this? In Psalm 119.9 we read, How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. Then in verse 11, the psalmist says to the Lord, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. God's word gives us answers to everyday problems. So we challenge you to hide his word in your heart, to memorize it, to become stronger in your Christian life. This course includes 13 key memory passages for you to learn. But first let us consider the new enemy you now face. Before you trusted Jesus, Satan may not have bothered you particularly, but now that you have left his crowd and joined the ranks of those who believe in and follow the Son of God and his word, you are no longer in Satan's domain. You now belong to Jesus who has bought and paid for you with the price, the price of his own blood shed on the cross. You may be sure that Satan will attempt to trouble you. It will happen soon. We can overcome Satan only as we use the weapons God has provided. In Ephesians 6.17 we read, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, our weapon of offense. In verse 16 of this chapter, we, also, we are also commanded to take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Faith is our shield, and so, since the Word of God is the source of our faith, scriptures are also weapons of defense. In Matthew 4, 1-11, you can read how Jesus Christ himself was tempted by Satan in three specific ways. Jesus defeated him each time by quoting scripture, submitting himself to its authority. If Jesus deemed it necessary to meet Satan this way, how much more do we need this mighty weapon, the Word of God, in our battles with the with evil. We'll end this as an introduction because we want to give you the opportunity now to plan on studying and applying this particular scripture that we're going to use. It's Lessons on Assurance and the first one is to memorize 1 John 5, 11 and 12. So you can write that down. You can go out and get this book if you want to. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know, one of those kind of books. I could send you one, I guess, but I'm not sure that you get a hold of me in time. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we'll figure that one out. I can show you a link where you get it on the web, but Assurance of Salvation, memorize that. I mean, you might as well, you might as well learn it. I'm not big on memorization, but I happen to know that one because it's, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who hath the Son hath life. He who is not the Son of God has not life. I do think that we don't need to memorize the numbers, but that's okay if you want to. I think we need to think through what's being said sometimes, and sometimes people don't do that. They memorize and they just don't really have a connection with it. I would say if you want to learn in Sunday school, the best way is to be connected. You have to connect yourself with God himself, otherwise you'll dispossess yourself of anything that you might have gotten in salvation. So in order to be connected with God, the way we do that is called prayer. Prayer means you're talking to God. Now, you might not be getting much back from God yet. We're going to get into that in Sunday school. But maybe God spoke to you already. Maybe he's already talked to you and you're like, woohoo, you know, and you've already got kind of that going. Good. Good for you. Kudos. 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 
Kudos! But being connected with God is by way of communicating to Him, and communication is what we call prayer. It's asking God to speak to you and talking to Him and letting Him know what's going on with you. So you should pray, and we will ask you to pray just like you did as you when you asked Jesus into your life. If you said, God saved me, then God saved you. If you asked God to come into my life, God came into your life. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. What you don't have, ask for. If you don't have peace about your salvation, ask God for peace. Just say, God, I don't have peace about my salvation. Give me peace. And he will. I mean, that's how easy it is. So I want to inspire you with the easy part of Sunday school. I want you to come and learn of being saved the simple way. I want you to trust in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledging Him so He can direct your path, so that you can go the shortcut, so to speak, directly to God, and God can go directly to you. You don't need me, and you don't need the Spirit of God necessarily, but you do need to have God working in you, God working on you, and God working with you. Because He will anyways. So you might as well ask Him to change your heart, if you have a hard heart. You know if you do or don't. You could ask God to change your mind if your mind's all made up about something. You can ask God to give you understanding if you don't understand something. You should begin to learn to ask God for everything. Just like a little baby cries when it wants to be fed and poops when it wants to poop and literally laughs when it's tickled and those kind of responses. Right now, if you're a baby Christian, no matter how smart you are in business, ask for everything from God. Just say, God, I don't understand Tell me. And keep asking. Don't stop. Ask till you get. And then if you do get it, great. Then stop asking. We'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. We'll pray about things. You'll pray about things. You will say things. And we'll do things. Those are the reasons why we turn everything back to God. We don't take it and I tell you, Oh, well, now that you're saved, I want you to go and read your Bible on your own and do this and do that and learn this and learn that and become some theological kind of, you know, spiritual giant. No, I want you to learn of Jesus. I want you to know Jesus. I want you to experience Jesus in a personal and intimate way. I want you to relate to him day by day. I want you to every day grow and grow and grow and grow. These plants, they can't help it. I water them, they grow. I water them, they grow. I water them, they grow. You want to watch video? You'll grow. You will. You, you have to. You can't just simply listen to the word of God and watch these videos without growing. They're going to cause you to grow because they are designed in some way and blessed by the Holy Spirit to cause you to be like watered, like these plants are, so that they'll grow and 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 grow until you know. And then when you know, you can grow yourself, you know, so to speak. And the Holy Spirit will grow fruit in your life and you'll become joy-filled and happy and loving and caring and temperate and meek and kind and gentle, sort of. Slowly, piece by piece, step by step. But we'll be teaching on that and growing in that and learning of that. So that way you take it one step at a time. You don't wake up one day and you're suddenly perfect. Yeah, maybe, but you know, you're perfect in God's eyes. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, you're pretty rough around the edges. <laughs> Still got a chip on your shoulder. You know? Still got kind of like, you know, a block on your, or a stock on your block. You know, it's kind of like, man, you've been carrying that thing around a long time, huh? But you can know the Lord, just by asking. You can be saved as far as salvation is concerned. If you haven't been saved before and you've suddenly you know, found this video, you can be saved just by asking. Just ask Jesus in your life. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. Help. Bingo. You're saved. God will work on you from that moment on and he'll take you into a church or to a place or even with me right now. You could say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. God, I admit that you know I've got sin in my life. God, I admit that you know I can't control my life. God, I admit I need you in my life. God, I God, I admit all those things. I don't even know what I'm admitting, but I'm just going to admit it anyways and just ask you, God, take over my life, please. Bingo, you're saved. And so, there you go. Now you can go on with Jesus and learn who he is, what he is, what he's done, how he's done it, and where he's done it, and how he's going to take you from beginning, square one, you got saved, you asked him, to the end result where you're going, wow, other people are getting saved because they're helping, you know, I'm helping them to learn about Jesus and Jesus is saving them. So really it has nothing to do with you, sort of, and it has everything to do with you, kind of, but in between times, guess what? From beginning to end, God is working with you. And so let's enjoy this, okay? Let's have fun with this. Let's take that scripture you said 
you know, that you're going to memorize. Oh, you didn't say you're going to memorize it? Okay, well, I swear to do my duty to God and my country. No, I'm kidding. No, if you don't want to memorize it, don't memorize it. Read it. Put a little card up if you want to. But the scripture is 1 John 5, 11 and 12. I would recommend reading all of 1 John, but, you know, that's just me. You know, I kind of like going ahead of the game. But 1 John 5, 11 and 12 is the one that we're going to discuss. We're going to eat it. We're going to chew on it. We're going to suck it to death, you know, and try to get some milk, you know, and see what it has to say. It should encourage us in some ways. So once we do, we're going to take this first part, which will be called Lessons on Assurance, or Lessons Beginning Steps, like the five basic steps for Christians. And we'll take them one week at a time, you know, and you should watch only one of these basic Bible believers classes or Sunday school lessons one week at a time. If you want to run ahead, that's okay. Take, you know, do the fast course, you know. I mean, I don't care, you know. It's like experience is the best way of learning, you know. And so once you've experienced it, then, you know, there's not much you can do. You want to sing as fresh like spring, you got to pass it on, you know. It's a long story, different song. But uh, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. But th my desire is that you would be connected with God. Today, tomorrow, the next day, as you continue to learn, read your Bible, and pray, those things, be connected with God. Talk to Him. Be honest. Go through your day just talking. Even if you get locked up, you know, in some who's gal, you know, thinking that you're crazy, you know, talk to God. Just talk to Him. God will listen. God is there. God loves you. And because Jesus did what He did, He wanted you to know Him, but also to know His Father, who is in heaven, that loves you. Because you may have had other fathers, and you may have had other people, you know, that said they care, but the only one who really is going to save you from yourself, save you from Satan, save you from the world and its ways, save you from drug addictions or sex addictions or, you know, uh, game boy addictions or, you know, tech addictions or all these other addictions that are out there, you know, of the flesh, is the one that's going to cause you to be born again. That's Jesus. Jesus said, what's born of the flesh is flesh and what's born of the spirit is spirit, you know, just you want to be born again? Good. Just ask. That's simple. You can be born again. So, may you grow this week in studying 1 John 5, 11, and 12. Make sure that's the exact scripture that it is. 1 John 5, 11, and 12. May you grow in the knowledge of studying 1 John 5, 11, and 12 and enjoy it for what it is and play with it a little bit, you know, and read it and understand it. But then also talk to God and those are the two things I pray for you today. May you talk to God Walk in his word, his way, and his will. Reading it daily, praying, getting connected with God, and talking to him all through your day. Yeah, you know, through the night would be nice too, but if you're you know, married or something, you know, your wife might want to wonder why you're talking, or your husband might want to wonder what you're talking about. But hey, don't worry about what others say. You need to talk to God about it first, and then go from there. So, Father, I pray that these people who have come to Sunday school who have learned from you, who have heard from you, who know you, and are growing in the knowledge of knowing you, that they might be blessed, that they might find rest, that they might know peace, that their efforts to find salvation might cease, that the enemy would be bound and protected and kept away from their lives for a season so that they can grow in the knowledge of you, that they would continue to learn of you and they would continue to find in you that perfect example of love that Jesus has demonstrated for their life, for their day, for their way that they're living their life right now. And so, God, I pray that you'll help them by speaking to them. You'll help them by being connected to them. You'll help them by teaching them. And you'll help them to live each day in a great expectant way, to see something new that Jesus has to say to them today as we go our way serving you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, check it out, man. Look forward to seeing you next time. Because after all, I never went to Sunday school. <laughs> Maybe you should.